All right, you're up. You okay. didn't give your history. Well, this is quite a family here. <laughs> and I'm delighted to be part of this family. Uh, I think my purpose for being here is, uh, is sort of to give my history. And uh, perhaps a good place to start. Uh, this happens to be a work that my mother painted, probably about the time that I was born, which is 1936. And this is uh, midway between Highland and Ocean. Uh, just off of Moonstone Street, between Moonstone and 42nd, uh, at least that's, that's my recollection. And as a kid, I remember crawling up under this and get inside yeah. and finding books and all kinds of things scattered about. <laughs> but it was a typical of, uh, say, a uh, Pasadena family who wanted to come to the beach on the weekends, and so they built these little fantasy cottages. It was kind of quaint, uh, kind Pardon? of European-looking. Uh, my mother was quite a good artist, and that was my good fortune. My dad happened to be filled with energy and uh, optimism and uh, just uh, a, a good demeanor. And he was always able to get work, and he was always valued wherever he worked. And on the weekends, he worked for himself. And he worked for himself um, building houses with the money that my mother made. <laughs> and this is in uh, 1936, uh, we'll put it this way, through the 30s, through the Depression. Wow. And, what was uh, his name? His name was Frank Spencer. My okay. mother's name was May Hoard Spencer. Okay, my dad was Frank Coons and he was a builder in the 30s. Okay, well I'm sure they knew one another. Uh, yeah, I must have oh. been, I wondered about the name. Oh yes. Okay, uh, all right, go ahead. Uh, but dad uh, was pretty much uh, a person who would work for himself. But he loved uh, buying a little piece of property for a few hundred dollars. He, he built a very small place. And then the next year he'd add on to it. And the year after that he'd add on to it and of course he'd rent it. Or hey, they'd live in it. And they'd go swimming every day. So that was pretty much my good fortune. 1930 was when my dad built his first house, probably on 43rd Street. Uh, in 1932, Here we go. See that? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. A very small place. Yeah. Interesting. This house exists in a somewhat expanded form, but it exists exactly next door to the house I now live in. <laughs> and it, it exists exactly next door to a house that I built and designed. And this is next to another house which my father built in 1941, uh, in which I grew up. So this is on Crest Drive, uh, El Porto Street. By the way, this is something that I wrote in, my, in 2012 that uh, gives somewhat the, the history of being a young person growing up in Manhattan Beach. And I have left a copy here with the Historic Society, uh, but I have it on my computer, a <coughs> wonderful device. <laughs> I, I, I just love technology and I love what the world has become in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we can discuss perhaps how it has changed in some negative fashion, but it's still pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. And Don, much of that is in here. Yes, we're going to publish your essay in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, probably later this year, so. Okay, very good. Uh, also, I might mention, this is a, a work that I uh, wrote in 2005. And this is more a history of El Porto, as I recall, growing up there and has, uh, as it uh, evolved through the years, yeah. so beyond my uh, uh, high school years. Uh, this too is on the computer, and if any of you want to give me your email address, I could send them to you quite easily. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to print them all up. <coughs> I know. In uh, 2005, the Easy Reader uh, also published the, uh, the earlier work about El Porto. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, one of the problems uh, you're, you all know Harvey Washbangers and the mm -hmm. wash tub. They're different places, aren't they? One is right next to the other, and they were in competition. Well, somehow, uh, Kevin Cody assigned the job of writing this out, and out of nowhere, when I wrote the wash tub with such and such, 
whoever did the editing put in parentheses, Harvey Washbangers behind it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was reading through this, and everything's pretty good until I came to that, and then I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, perhaps a little bit of history, uh, as I grew up in El Porto, my school was El Segundo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, great swimming pool, bus trips, sand dunes everywhere, um, mm -hmm. big sky, uh, lots of time at the beach. My parents said, go out and play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, get lots of sun, because it's not rickets. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants rickets. So uh, this is what I did, and this is pretty much what I've been doing all my life, uh, going out and playing. And uh, as an attitude for life, I kind of recommend it, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, life is a banquet and most poor saps are starving. That's mm -hmm. a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a line from Annie Mame. But when you see life as a banquet, and here in Manhattan Beach, somehow, we have a spot right in the middle of the table yes. because with an easy reach are all these goodies. And the, the only downside is that we don't quite have enough lifetime to taste all of the goodies. <laughs> but uh, one can try with the right attitude. Uh, you can do pretty well. So I went to uh, El Segundo. I too wanted to be an artist. So the best art instruction I thought at the time was Cesar Hernandez and Redonda Beach. So I went to Redondo, graduated Redondo in 1954. I had a scholarship to Otis Art Institute, a full scholarship, but they required academic work. That means I went to El Camino as a student, uh, liked it, <coughs> loved the academic work. That too was part of the banquet. So uh, after my third year at Otis, I went to UCLA. <coughs> Finished up at UCLA with a lot of diverse things that are just so interesting, uh, including uh, uh, a beginning class, believe it or not, with my graduate <coughs> teller in physics. Mm. Now that, it's just a fascinating place to be. Uh, beyond that, met a wonderful nurse from Canada uh, at a party, great party, and uh, we married two daughters. And one of them, by the way, is teaching third grade here at Meadows mm -hmm. and lives uh, just one block from Meadows. Uh, after uh, UCLA, I worked for an art service, uh, did some uh, book illustration, uh, went out, did a lot of painting, got a job at El Camino, taught at El Camino for 10 years in the art department. And uh, in the meantime, Let's see what we have here. The little house that we bought uh, on 18th Street, just off of Raoul, was small enough that uh, on that lot I could build a 42-foot sailboat. Mm -hmm. Now art is the, the, uh, the expression of values, and the value of having a family and having the adventure, the window of opportunity, uh, that, that blank canvas of time uh, seemed to be well filled if indeed I could get my family on something like this and go sailing. So the four years that I did not live in Manhattan Beach <coughs> were spent sailing, <coughs> excuse me, and living uh, aboard with my wife, mm. both at King Harbor and sailing to places like uh, Mexico and the Hawaiian Islands. <coughs> and the kids went to school uh, one semester in Hawaii. So, terrific adventure. Uh, once back from Hawaii, I decided to uh, <clears throat> do a lot of painting, and uh, this type of watercolor style is the kind of style that one can uh, carry everything on a bicycle, ride to a great location, sit down, uh, probably about three or four hours uh, end up with a painting. And this was done by sitting on top of my car, literally. Uh, I had a Volkswagen square back with a uh, rack on the top so I could put a chair up there and it gave me a great view. 
and I got to meet my neighbors. So that, where is that? Rosecrans? <coughs> yes, yes. yes. Well, no, this is that's the old that's house. Beach Boulevard oh, it's and Highland Avenue. Yeah, that's the old house. Building store there in the corner. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Standard what? Station. That's the old house. The gas station. Yeah, the corner. That's the corner. And then the clothing store. And then Lamar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're okay. You're like my bedroom and I'm like your bedroom. Yeah, right there where those people are crossing the street. That the other is in front of the kettle. Oh, what year do you think? Uh, it's 1980. The gas station was there originally back in the 20s. Mm -hmm. Yes. The and there was one where the kettle was, too. Yeah. 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 The street. But that was later. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Anybody know when the kettle was built? Um, when the kettle was Yeah. Uh, early yeah. 70s. Yeah. Wow. Um, which were the years of the best station? Oh, I missed that. I missed that. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, that was different. I like going in the balloon man. Walking my mom was a broker. The house would sell for thirty thousand, and like Al Wilson Realty, he'd go, "I just closed a big deal. I'm buying drinks at the Bay 90, So all the local realtors would go over about four in the afternoon. I think I was in eighth grade then, and they had the balloon man that come in on Fridays. Yeah. And they had signs that came down. Yeah. <laughs> they had. Remember, one fell in my drink. <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> I, I thought I'd pass around a few of, uh, I, I didn't take many photographs of my paintings, but uh, all of these are Manhattan Beach scenes, so if you want to pass mm -hmm. those around. And I did a lot of uh, drawings. Here you go, see that? <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, they sketched it. It's a lot of pretty done. You can pass those around. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh. Right. Oh. Oh. Very good, yeah. Those are good. Don, I have to ask a question. Yes, Steve. We all know it's difficult for a commercial, I mean, a, a artist to make a living. Uh, did you have a gallery or uh, have a favorite gallery that uh, was very I successful? had my own gallery on Manhattan Beach Boulevard uh, at the same time that I was teaching uh, at El Camino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very fortunate, very fortunate indeed, in that my parents had built a number of items in town. And so I'm a jack of all trades. My father's a contractor. I knew how to build things. Mm -hmm. I knew how to fix things. And so we eventually evolved into a kind of family uh, activity, maintaining property, building. Mm -hmm. uh, I built commercial here. I added onto my own house. I usually did my own work, my own designs. And uh, so as a consequence, I had a lot of options that many people do not have. So I had access to commercial property that my folks had built. My dad built the first store down there in Manhattan Beach Boulevard in 19, <coughs> 1939, I believe. Mm -hmm. So when you develop property, did you <coughs> so when I developed property, I could use it. And later on, when I uh, rented that property, I could rent it in a fashion that allowed me to show my work. Like Sharon Poking for instance. Oh, great. So Sharon uh, had a, a a better rent than most were to have, but I had access to a number of walls in her store. So I could be out painting and have my, my paintings on display. Oh, great. And then, of course, I, I did the very first uh, Old Hometown Fair and the very first Fiesta of uh, Wall of Arts mm -hmm. in Hermosa Beach. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, what story are you talking about? Uh, that would be 316 Manhattan Beach Boulevard originally. And Sharon Pokinghorn was in 320 for a while. And then the Wahlberg market used to be downtown. Wahlberg. Uh, I don't they're in the 20s. Okay, you're, you're, you're going back away. You're, you're, 16, you're 16 years older than I am. I'm with you. I don't know what, where this is. And uh, for the Historic Society, I had an opera. I had a good friend uh, in Redondo Beach who was precocious, and he got his pilot's license when he was a high schooler. But the year after we graduated, yeah. he took me up and uh, we flew over Manhattan Beach, over the South Bay, and uh, I took a number of photographs. Uh, and uh, I, I love the computer so that I can scan those slides and uh, get fairly good resolution, not perfect. But here are some shots of Manhattan Beach, or parts of Manhattan <coughs> Beach. And what year are we talking on those? Uh, we're talking about, it's either 1956 or 57. Mm -hmm. So uh, you moved here uh, that year, or your right. folks came here in 57. Right. Yeah. So this is what it looked like. 
And uh, when you look at this, you see how much sand there is. Yeah. We yeah. knew we were living on sand dunes. Uh, the change has been one of manicuring. We are incredibly manicured now. <laughs> and I, I can't imagine my neighbors allowing me to build the boat next to their house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I had awesome neighbors. Very good. Very, very mm -hmm. fortunate. Now, I realize I'm using up a lot of time here, so I think we should right. wrap this up. <laughs> Anyhow, I will leave this here so you can all uh, take a closer look at these. They're, they're very interesting and it'd be fun. We'll get together perhaps later on and we'll discuss some of the changes, the pros and the cons, and some of our observations about uh, the, uh, the trajectories that, that uh, our longevity allows us to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, to uh, view. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Don, could you um, tell us a little bit about what brought your parents here and from where they came? Okay, well, my mother I was born and raised in a small town, uh, Montevideo, Minnesota. Her father was the editor of uh, the small town newspaper. She was born in 1899. Uh, she you remember had a great the name of the town? Art. I'm sorry. Pardon? You remember the name of the town? Montevideo, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, my father was born on a farm, Farmington, Illinois, in fact, mm -hmm. and uh, he, uh, he was born in 1896, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, joined the Navy in 1918, trained uh, for trench warfare with, with a rifle and was very good at it, um, but luckily the war ended before they sent him uh, across the pond. And uh, Dad was filled with adventure, he and a friend. Uh, Took an old car and just drove across to California where, where life would be good. <laughs> and he wouldn't have to work quite so hard as he did on the farm. Was that 1921? Uh, probably 19, uh, 19, 1920. Uh, there were a number of trips back to help his parents on the farm. Uh, but like I said before, a hard worker and healthy man. They both lived well into their 90s. And uh, my dad had passed his driver's license uh, uh, when he was 97, you know, with no problem. I won't didn't even need eyeglasses. Uh, yes. Don't get Pat worked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pat just gave his uh, up. Yeah, yeah, they, met, they, they met on top of Mount Low. My dad was up there with a buddy, and my mother was up there with some girlfriends, and uh, she was riding horses. And he saw what he liked. In fact, just a few weeks ago, uh, as a family, we went up to Mount Low to uh, relive their first meeting, and I have his first love letter, oh, which Lord. was his first letter to my mother. Oh, yeah. oh, and it was extraordinarily well done. <laughs> uh, it was his first bashful attempt at a love letter, and that's how we ended. <laughs> Where is Mount Low? I don't know. Mount Lowe is uh, very close to Mount Wilson, so okay. if you yes. go up to Mount yes. Wilson, yes. just uh, start hiking to the west, okay. and uh, you'll find it. Uh, anyhow, they, they dated for four years. My mother went to Chenard's Art School. Uh, she was good enough that in her third year there, they actually had her teaching a class. Wow. Uh, and uh, later on, she went out and she did mostly fashion illustration, uh, Bullock's, uh, I Magnum, uh, just loved life because uh, everybody loved her, loved her work. Yeah. And that was pretty much the way it was uh, their entire life. And I, I know been... now how exceptional they were as individuals. I tried to emulate them to a degree, you know, whatever degree I could. Um, but uh, not, nothing can quite match uh, perfection. <laughs> well, Don, I want to say you're, you're like your dad in being somewhat poetic. I mean, who else would start a story about life is a, uh, you know, is, is a, a banquet. Of banquet. <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, well, if we have more time, we'll get together and we'll discuss philosophy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. The nature of truth, how do we know truth? Uh, the feelings that evolve from those beliefs that we uh, somehow come to believe are true. How we eliminate subjectivity uh, from the equation, thus uh, adhering to a, a lifestyle that is actually working with charts that represent the real world rather than the imagined world. 
but we'll get into that. I love it. <laughs> 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 Where is it? You don't know what you're getting yeah. into. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay, Sorry, now. <laughs> You better, you better cut it off here. Right? <laughs> there we go. I, I love the ideas. I kept little notes in my bed, by, by, by the bed. I wake up in the morning and I have all these great ideas to write it down. Wow. And after, say, 20, 30 years, I decided to put it all together. That was 1995. And I self-published the book, uh, illustrated it. But I'm not a good salesman. I don't like selling. So, it just helped clarify my mind, uh, yeah, at least some of the basics. So, yes, we'll get together sometime. Nice. <laughs> Any other questions? By the way. Oh. Is that you? My daughter who is teaching at Meadows. That's <laughs> <laughs> But that was taken in Canada. Yeah. My brother-in-law happened to love boats, too. And, uh, yeah. Uh, luckily, I married a, a lady who uh, had some of that adventure to the well. So we had a good time. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.